it's so strange, Heather, we were just talking earlier on, you're, you, you're quite honest about uh, being quite a shy person. Mm, I and I look, shy. I look at what you've done, obviously, career-wise, and Strictly certainly is a nerve-wracking experience for the best of us. <laughs> um, how do you deal with that aspect of your personality? I think um, originally I just I was just very quiet. I was just, just very shy, and I think it's because I didn't always trust everybody with my own thoughts and opinions. And I think sometimes you think, well, I'm a little bit outside the box, and if I do, people will look at me as if I'm weird. And I think that's the that's the thing you think to yourself: if you reveal yourself, people won't like you, or they'll think you're different. Mm. And I think that holds people back a lot. And but I realised um, I used to go to a show, and people would be, like, "Where's the lead singer?" And I'd be just like, Aww. but, I, but what it, did, it, it, get you, it doesn't get you anywhere, though. Hey, I can't believe you're saying that because all your music to me is so positive. You either say to yourself, "I can't cope," or you just, you know. What so I'm always thinking, what makes people get out of bed when there's certain situations that yeah. happen and you're unhappy? How do you make yourself happy? Mm. And I'm older now, so you know I'm going to choose happy. So whatever it takes, once it doesn't hurt anyone else. I'm going to choose happy. It's fascinating to me because I'm not a shy person, but I have a shy child, mm -hmm. and this child has been sent to me for mm -hmm. a reason to try and understand it. And I, it's really difficult. Uh, what do you think the biggest mistake is if you have a shy child? What should you not do? Help I me out. I think that you should not push them into doing something they don't want to do. Really? You know, so it's like when uh, you have a young child and you say, go and kiss auntie so-and-so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they don't want to kiss auntie so-and-so or uncle so-and-so, that's OK. Mm. And I think that you've just got to let your child know that who they are and how they are is OK. Because I had a, a nephew and he was very, very shy, was uber bright. Mm. But when he got home, he was himself. And in certain situations at school, he'd answer all the questions or he'd... But the teachers would say, is there something going on at home? But he was just quiet. Yeah. And, but he was very observant. You need more so I think quiet all you, you, you know, I'm not quiet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that voice. <laughs> but I think you should allow people to be quiet. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Heather, Heather, what's really interesting is that you talk about you had a difficult upbringing in terms of, you know, you say you were a child of immigrant parents growing up in a council estate. I yeah. shared that story, yeah. I get that. You, but you also put that, you know, and I think this is... I get this, and I think it's sad, and I don't think people really understand how crippling this can be, but you said, as a child, I started to realise that my friends at school, they didn't play with me after school because they didn't want their parents to know that they had a friend that was black. Yeah. How... How does that shape you? I, I know, yeah. but I just think for people who don't understand that, can you tell us what that meant to you? I mean, it was hurtful at the time, and I knew... Um, straight away what it was. And I knew that their parents weren't um, endorsing our, our friendship. And you, you think to yourself, well, why is that? And it's usually basically stereotypes. And we, because, you know, I've started off from a place, like I said, immigrant parents, and I'm of African descent, and we have the whole issue of slavery. And I think that sometimes when people see people of African descent, they can't disassociate that we were enslaved. And so sometimes they want to treat you less. And... What you have to understand is that uh, nobody is less or more, yeah. and that how I came, how you get over it, and what you're told is that you just got to be excellent at what you do mm -hmm. to show that um, you know there's a lot. It's not just about being black, it's, but you know we have an immigrant community, uh, mm -hmm. and you're told to work twice as hard as everyone else, and uh, really not to not, not to acknowledge where you are, but uh, not to really. Uh, dwell on it or complain, it's like, you know, you got out there and you, and you work hard and you show that you're just as good as anyone else. Mm. It's part of that, being in a band and not agreeing with some of the things you were asked to do but not saying anything because you didn't want to be seen as difficult. Um, no, I wouldn't say that at all. But even though I was shy, I would always speak up for myself. And I was with people who weren't uh, racist, prejudicial yeah. in any kind of way. And everybody had, like, you know, one, two of the members were same like me, immigrant parents, Irish descent, you know, you've got to think there's no blacks, no Irish, <laughs> no dogs. So, you know, there was a, there was a kind of shared theme for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you, but they still had that thing about making good. And, you know, that's the thing, you have this thing about making good. And I always thought to myself, I'm, I should speak up, because if yeah. you don't speak up, you're in trouble. And that's why 
I'm not as shy as I was. Because mm -hmm. when you don't speak up, people make assumptions. And mm -hmm. usually, if you don't look like them, those assumptions can be negative. So I want people to be fully clear of what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, Heather, we're talking about them. Your music, and it is those iconic big mm. tunes. We all know every single word of it yeah. still. It comes yeah. on and you sing along instantly. So I go back on, on, on the road. Um, I keep it hazy because I'm always so nervous, but it's, it's <laughs> early, early April. Do you still get the same kick out of that performance? That Absolutely. Have, yeah. It is the most wonderful thing, because everybody knows I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't eat animal flesh or anything like that. So <laughs> I can see thinking, what does she do? Like, <laughs> the biggest high of all is getting on stage. Yeah. You know, there is nothing that can touch it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and even though I don't drink and smoke, I've been known to dance on tabletops, so, you know. Oh, <laughs> I, I've seen you dance on tabletops, Heather. <laughs>